Okay, my name is Mark Wrigley, I'm a physicist and I took my physics degree in the 1970s. I've spent most of my life working in mobile telecoms. So on the day of the Apollo 11 landings, which actually was the night for Britain, um, I was sitting in front of our family television set with my father's cine camera filming the whole event and at the same time recording the sound on his reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. 40 seconds away from the Apollo 11 liftoff. When we see coverage now of the moon landings, what we generally see is high quality film that the astronauts brought back, which has been edited and condensed into a few minutes. When I was recording this, things went on for hours uh, and it really actually was quite boring. Um, there'd be some event happen, uh, but then on the night of the moon landings, we had something like six hours of television. So it did get, actually get a little bit boring in, in between. But the thing that I found quite interesting is I recorded most of the sound of that. I didn't get all the pictures. And when you listen to the um, programs that the BBC were putting out, it's really quite deep and, and quite interesting. And so there's a lot of information in there that you'd otherwise miss. So that's one of the reasons I, I'm quite enthusiastic about digitizing all that so other people can listen to them. So all five engines of the second stage have ignited and the second stage is moving it yeah, on successfully. Well, Houston thrusters go, all engines, you're looking good. Before we had digital cameras, we had cine cameras. And actually these were quite expensive pieces of kit. Uh, so the one I used was my, my father's. But the thing I had to sort out was getting some sort of film that was sensitive enough to get pictures from a TV set instead of being outside in the sunshine. So I found a company that made high-speed black and white film and that's what I used. And it was quite expensive for somebody on pocket money. So it, I could get about four minutes filming out of one film. And to do it, you'd put the film through the camera, turn it over like a, a record and put it through a second time and then send it off to some place in Germany where it'd be processed and come back. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. So I got hold of what's called a, a Zenith 3M camera, which was a low cost, Soviet, ironically Soviet made camera and I started shooting the TV screen, putting the camera on a tripod in front of the TV using the slowest speed it had got, which was a thirtieth of a second and through a lot of technical stuff, this actually caused a little bit of a pattern on the screen, but it was good enough. And then I went off and developed my own pictures. Um, so it really got me into black and white photography and I was doing stuff like rolling my own films and trying to get things as cheaply as possible and then, and then printing the things out and making them into scrapbooks. And I'd also put uh, newspaper articles in, in the same scrapbook. And I, I think I stopped doing it around about Apollo 12. And that was when I went off to university and had to do other things. One of the things that was interesting at the time is if you really wanted to get colour images of what had happened and look at the colour photos, the best thing to do was to go and buy a magazine. So I used to regularly buy Life magazine, which had really good coverage. In later life, I was able to travel a lot. I was working abroad and able to travel to places. So I went back to the NASA center in Florida several times and bought bits. And it was quite interesting because what I thought I'd never be able to record was there for sale in NASA in the form of a videotape of most of the stuff I've ever recorded. And in fact, I was there 25 years ago because one of the things I bought was a special edition of a magazine that they printed for the 25th anniversary of the Apollo moon landings, which I, I've still got. And it's always been a bit of a thrill to me in terms of how technology has gone forward because then we've gone into DVDs and Blu-ray and you can actually get better and better images of the Apollo moon landings, which I was trying to record. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. So you can imagine I was pretty obsessed by all this as a, as a teenager. 
I was following the missions and I was so excited and I could see lots of things in the future that, that could happen. Uh, and I, I went to talk to my careers master at school about this and he, he listened to what I got to say and he said, you should be a woodwork teacher. And I think that's the point at which I really rebelled in a good way. I thought, no, I want to be an astronaut. And I thought the best way to do this is to go and study physics and get a degree in physics. So I think that conversation actually spurred me on to go and get the qualifications I needed to go to university and do a physics degree.